cancer is uh, one of the more common cancers. Um, everyone has about a 5 to 6% lifetime risk for developing colon cancer. Uh, we think about maybe 5 to 10% of all colon cancer is hereditary, which means that there is one single gene that's uh, contributing to the cancer in the family. Another maybe 20 to 25% of colon cancer is what we consider to be familial. And that's just a way to describe when we can't identify that one known genetic cause, but we think there is still a mixture of genetic and environmental factors playing a role in the cancer in the family. Most colon cancer is just going to be sporadic, meaning there's not one identifiable cause. We might not see it running in a family, usually due to age and all that. Um, there's a big push now to pick up that 5 to 10 percent of colon cancer that is hereditary. So of that 5 to 10 percent, we know that Lynch syndrome, or some people might know it as HNPCC, um, accounts for most of that. That's the most common hereditary cause of colon cancer. And there's a really big push now to pick that up, so to do universal screening for Lynch syndrome, because it's really pretty a manageable condition once you know about it, um, once you can do predictive testing for family members. So a lot of larger institutions are now doing this universal screening, and it's actually a test that's done on the tumor cells. Um, one of the tests is called microsatellite instability. The other is immunohistochemistry. And it's a really good way to screen for people who might be at risk for having hereditary colon cancer. It's a, you know, if someone's tumor shows features of Lynch syndrome, then the thought is that they would then get referred to a genetic specialist, a genetic counselor, um, to do more extensive genetic testing on a blood sample. So I think that's a really great push now. It's, you know, kind of getting out into the open more. People are more aware of it. Um, which is great, you know, it's just going to allow us to identify more people that have Lynch syndrome and hopefully avoid more cancer diagnoses. Um, the other, you know, kind of main component of hereditary colon cancer is familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome, or FAP. Um, that condition is, tends to be a little bit more noticeable in its classic form. It usually presents when um, individuals are really young. They can get hundreds to thousands of colon polyps and have a really high risk for colon cancer. Um, if they don't have a surgery to have their colon removed. So you can see how we might pick that one up a little bit more easily when it's in its classic form. But there's a huge spectrum with that condition as well, um, where people can, might, can maybe develop fewer polyps at older ages. Um, and so that's why it's really important for providers to be aware of it so that people who get many polyps later in life are still referred to the appropriate genetic specialist. We have a really extensive menu, really comprehensive menu for hereditary colon cancer testing. Um, it's certainly possible to order those two tests plus a number of different ones on their own. But the Colon X panel is really great because it includes all the genes for Lynch syndrome and there's five that we have discovered now, so it's a lot of testing. There's two main genes for FAP, which is uh, APC and MYH. And then the Colon X panel also looks at other genes that are associated with more rare syndromes. Um, that have also have an increased risk for colon cancer. Um, a couple examples are two genes that are associated with a condition called juvenile polyposis. And it doesn't mean it happens in children. Juvenile polyps are actually a specific type of polyp, um, but we see an increased risk of colon cancer in those individuals. Um, it looks at a gene called P10, which is associated with a condition called Cowden syndrome. So all of these genes are on the panel, but they're also offered individually. So really any gene you'd want to look at related to colon cancer, you can find with Ambry.